Let us bring our attention to my right. What is this one gentleman from Hiroshima University, actually Hiroshima University researcher or researcher from Hiroshima University, attempting to show us with these two photo slides? What they are showing us is this, is this is the outcome of exposing SARS-CoV-2 to 30 seconds of UVC light of the 222 nanometer wavelength. Outcome, 99.7% reduction of the active SARS-CoV-2 virus. Why is that important? Because UVC 222 nanometer does not appear to penetrate the non-living surfaces of the skin and or the eyes, therefore not harm living cells. Meaning, you have a viable technology available now that can be utilized and installed in hospitals, nursing homes, restaurants, retail locations, public schools, and all, dare I say it, birthday parties. It's readily and available, which could basically, and again, let's just not mince words, uh, stop the mitigation of spit, you know, henceforth mask and distancing, from being transmitted rapidly to a host because it would have less than 30 seconds in order to accomplish that goal. Build an incredible public firewall. And basically, not just to mitigate this particular virus or pandemic of the day, but future pandemics. However, though, let us proceed. What we're going to do first is we're going to go to the abstract and read an excerpt from the abstract so you can see the motivation of why the researchers chose this path. But to proceed. In addition, previous studies have reported that low dose of 222 nanometer UVC inactivated aerosolized H1N1 influenza virus and human coronaviruses HCOV 229E and beta HCOV 0C43. Although there are few reports about the effectiveness of UV disinfection on SARS CoV 2, the efficacy of 222 nanometer UVC on SARS CoV 2 is poorly understood. The aim of the study was to investigate the in vitro efficacy of 2 to 2 nanometer UV disinfection of SARS-CoV-2 contamination. Now a caveat. The caveat which I'm about to introduce here is a great explanation from the IES Photobiology Committee. And the reason being is this. Often you hear the word kill and inactivate associated with viruses. What they're really trying to say is inactivate. But however though, let me give you the reason why. Yes, UVC kills living bacteria, but viruses are technically not living organisms. Thus, we should correctly say inactivated viruses. Individual energetic UVC photons photochemically interact with the RNA and DNA molecules in a virus or bacterium to render these microbes non-infectious. This is what I would imply by calling it the philosophical term Occam's razor. Instead of trying to make things complicated through behavioral engineering, vaccination, so on and so forth, you have something available, something simple and simple and effective. Well, there it is. But to proceed with the research as follows into the article, a safer UV light effectively kills virus causing COVID-19, kill and or, i.e. inactivate, study shows. A study conducted by Hiroshima University researchers found that using ultraviolet seed light with a wavelength of 222 nanometers, that's real important. If you're going on Amazon, a place like that, and you type in 222, a lot of the lights are gonna, that are gonna pop up are 254. And do not mistakenly buy a lamp that's 254 and assume it's 222. Do your research because 254 is not good to have around with people around. Uh, which is safer to use around humans effectively kill SARS-CoV-2, the first research in the world to prove its efficacy against the virus that causes COVID-19. An in vitro experiment by Hiroshima University researchers showed that 99.7% of the virus, or I should say of the SARS-CoV-2 viral culture was killed after a 30 second exposure to 222 nanometer UVC irradiation. And let's just word it out, 0.1 milliwatts per square centimeter. The study is published in the American Journal of Infection Control for those who want to know the approximate distance. And this is why it has to be used in a public setting to validate the information. I think they went as far as 24 centimeters, which is about 9.44 inches, nine and a half inches for simplicity. This part's important. 
because you have to delineate the differences between 222 and 254. It's important the public should know so they don't make any purchasing errors proceed as follows, or bureaucrats or policymakers. A wavelength of 222 nanometer UVC cannot penetrate the outer non-living layer of the human eye and skin, so it won't cause harm to the living cells beneath. Bingo. This makes it a safe but equally potent alternative to more damaging 254 nanometer UVC germicidal lamps increasingly used in disinfecting healthcare facilities. Since 254 nanometer UVC harms exposed human tissues, it could only be used to sanitize empty rooms. But 222 nanometer UVC can be a promising disinfection system for occupied public spaces, including hospitals where non-secomial infections are a possibility. So again, if the research pans out, turns out to be safe, if you imagine something as simple as UVC 222 light, uh, per se, being installed in a restaurant, retail location, boutique, nail salon, you know, that could simply mitigate the problem. And also, again, same time too, a very powerful tool against any potential future pandemics that may be around the corner. And we don't know. We're, we're practicing a huge behavioral conditioning experiment right now, which is without a doubt uh, reflecting itself in what's called dysbiosis, meaning distancing and masking up may be safe at the moment, but is not really uh, ideal for improving your immune system against future threats. But the proceed as follows. The research suggests further evaluation of the safety and effectiveness of 222 nanometer UVC radiation and killing and activating SARS-CoV-2 viruses in real world surfaces as our study only investigated it in vitro efficacy. So it's real interesting to look at. Oh, there's that and that. But I also want to bring you our attention to the FDA site. If you look at the FDA site, I believe it's going to show that the last time they updated their UVC information was in August. Since then, a plethora of information has come out in reference to UVC light and disinfection. In fact, just on, on the coronavirus alone, I think the last time I checked was October, there are 1,221 published research articles in reference to COVID-19 or the virus that causes COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2. All right, but we'll have the same time too. Wonderful, simple study to read through. I want to have the link to the actual full study, which is published. The technology is readily available. I'm not promoting anything, and nor do I make any money from any promotion. I don't make any money from the site. But still, it is vitally important and enjoyable to share with you. Gratitude. Thank you. I look forward to see you all once again in seven days. If you want to see the data analysis in reference to uh, correlations and controls of fires of those countries and so on and so forth, and pandemic mitigation strategies, what's working, what's not. In a data aspect, please feel free to join us on Saturday, actually Sunday morning at two in the morning, but that's the time that's available. Again, Ralph Dirk Gals, signing off gratitude. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you all once again sooner or seven days. See you then.